So for a few years now, I've had a thing for instant photography. It started in early 2015 when I discovered Fuji's Instax Share, a portable printer that used Instax Minifilm, that's Fuji's Polaroid essentially, and connected to your smartphone via Wi-Fi to print pictures. I also had a DSLR back then with an iFi SD card that automatically sent all the images I've taken to my phone. Combining those two things, I was able to take a portrait of someone and print it out for them just under two minutes. It was my magic trick and everyone loved it. In the fall of 2016, I attended the XOXO Festival for the first time. XOXO is an experimental festival for independent artists who live and work online. It's one of the best events I've ever attended, along with Bang Bang Con, of course. And it's also full of the most wonderful people. Every attendee also gets an invite to the festival Slack, like you all did to Discord, if you got the ticket. And the Slack has hundreds of channels. It's where we keep in touch for the rest of the time. I wanted to do a project at XOXO, so as an icebreaker, I just used my magic trick. I took portraits of the attendees and printed it out for them. I turned it really well. I got on the Snapchat page of MailChimp, for example. I even collected all the pictures on a site called Faces of XOXO 2016. In 2018, someone on the XO Slack posted about the paper and P1. This Chinese-made portable printer used regular form of paper and connected via Bluetooth to your phone. It had a quirky app that lets you print text, images, and a bunch of other things in black and white. It cost like $60. You could even get sticker paper for it, which is a lot of fun. The minute I saw it, I knew I needed one. This was how I was going to step up my portrait game for the next XOXO. And so I did. At the festival, people now got two versions of their portraits, one in Instax in full color and everything, and one from the paper end that had a very retro 8-bit look. People loved it. I repeated the project at XO 2019, and shortly after that, I started thinking about how I could change things up and give this project a new twist. Someone at the festival took a few pictures with the Game Boy camera, and they looked awesome. I remember the Raspberry Pi and how it had a camera module, so I started thinking, what if I go full lo-fi and use that with the papering somehow? The cherry on top could be processing all the images with the Atkinson dittering, the one used in HyperCard, which is my favorite dittering algorithm because everyone needs one. But the papering, as far as I knew anyway, only had this proprietary mobile app and nothing else. After trying to reverse engineer the APK without much success, I discovered that it had a desktop app on the Chinese language size of the manufacturer. It lets you print from your Mac or PC via USB and Bluetooth. It didn't take long from there to discover that someone reverse engineered the protocol the printer was using and made it into a Python library anyone could use. Around the time I was thinking about all this and doing all the research for the camera, I discovered that my friend Josh May was working on a project called Serious Client that lets you turn any printer into a little printer. And this is the point where you might be asking, what is, or more like, what was the little printer? Well, it was an internet connected thermal printer released in late 2012 by the British Rocket Experiment Group, better known as Berg. It connected via ZigBee to the Berg Cloud Bridge, their own IoT hub. It was supposed to be just the first of many devices of a future ecosystem of connected products. The little printer came with an app that could do a lot of things. Print you the weather and the headlines in the morning, your friends' Foursquare check-ins, time puzzles, and so on. Even better, if a friend of yours also had a little printer, you could send messages to each other's printers, essentially giving you a printer-based social network. Most importantly, the little printer was cute. I mean, just look at it. And sure, it may have been a novelty product, but it was a really fun one. The little printer did okay commercially. Berg made back its investment, at least. Despite its steep starting price of 199 pounds, that was later reduced to 149 pounds. Its premium price and design was necessary because the internals were costly back then, Remember, this is more than 10 years ago when they started designing it. The most expensive part being the thermal printing module. That's also the reason why it used ZigBee and not Bluetooth. 
Bluetooth chips were prohibitively expensive when they started designing the product. What didn't do so well, though, overall, was Berg's IoT platform, the Berg Cloud. While the company released the dev kit and built many interesting prototypes for it, including an internet-connected washing machine, designing, manufacturing, and releasing a product takes years. And they've done plenty, but they kind of ran out of time. And in late 2014, the startup just ran out of money. They kept the servers alive for the little printer until the end of 2015. And more importantly, before they were turned off, Berg open sourced the simple re-implementation of the server, codenamed Sirius, which only had the messaging component, the API, and not much else. If you hacked your Berg out bridge, you could connect it to the new server. Not much happened for the next four years, but in 2019, a company called Nord Projects revived the printers and the ecosystem around them. They added new features and a better API to the server and released a brand new mobile app as well for iOS. I've always wanted a little printer, but back in 2012, I couldn't really justify spending 200 pounds on it. You can't really find them on eBay anymore either. However, by connecting Josh's universal bridge slash printer project with the library that connects to my paper and P1, I could have my own little printer. And so can you. On this slide, you can see a diagram of how everything connects to each other. North Project has a serious server running that anyone can connect to, or you can even spin up your own. Josh's serious client library connects to it, pretending to be a Burke Cloud bridge with a little printer connected to it. That project communicates via the file system with the Python papering library, because at the end of the day, Sirius simply sends a pixel perfect image to the client for printing that one can just dump into a folder that's being washed and then printed. One of the advantages of this specific model of papering is that it uses the same size and resolution as the original little printer. Sirius's new API accepts plain text, arbitrary HTML, images, or JSON. So you can even hook it up to IFTTT or Zapier or whatever you want. And here's a sort of live demo of how it works. On this first video, I'm sending a message to my own printer via the app. This is as simple as it gets. Of course, you can add anyone's printer if you know their client key, letting you send a message, a picture, a drawing, or whatever to someone else. And here's me printing HTML via the API using curl for the sake of simplicity. There are already people creating new things for the little printer or remaking old things that were once available. You can see a few of them above. Cocktail recipes, weather, to-dos, or checking how many people are in space right now. Printer-based social networks are fun, even if they're sort of sparse. sparse. Max Hawkins put up his backend by laser printer to the wide open internet via Google Cloud Print and posted it to Twitter. People sent all kinds of cool stuff to him and he posted the most interesting ones. I want us to have our own fake little printer based social network. So if you want to join us, go to tinyprinter.club where you'll find all the information you need and the stuff we need help with. Right now, Josh is working on making Sirius client better, as well as the server. Monica Farrell and I have been working on improving the Python library. I'm thinking about creating a few more services for it to replicate the old little printer experience, like automatically printing out the weather in the morning. So grab the cheapest thermal printer you can find, a paper ring, or anything that supports the ask pass protocol will do, because the Sirius client already has support for it, Hook it up to your laptop or Raspberry Pi and join the fake little printer revolution. And thank you. Um, if you have any questions, ask me on the Discord channel. I'm happy to answer them. Um, visit, visit our website for all the information. Follow us on Twitter. Subscribe, like, hit the bell button. Thank you again.